the first video of a two-part series on building the classic arcade game Pong in Thunkable. Uh, I've started off with a template, and there's handouts. You can find those in the description, and you'll notice that there's been some assets uploaded, including uh, two MP3 files and two image files. So I'm going to get started. This video will focus on the building user interface, and the next video will um, focus on uh, the programming side. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I've got our first screen. I want to rename this. This is going to be our game screen. And this is where we're going to do most of our programming. Second thing I want to do just off the bat is I want to add another screen. You can do that by clicking the plus button. And this is going to be our game over screen where there's not going to be a whole lot happening, but when the game ends, the program should shift over to the game over screen. And on the game over screen, I'm going to put a button and we're going to call this button the new game button so that the user can click it to start a new game. And we'll just write about play a game. All right. That's all we're going to do on this screen for now. We'll do a bit more coding later in the app. I'm going to switch back to the game screen. And I'm going to do a number of things here. I want to add uh, some, do some design here. So I want to add a couple labels. We'll start with a label up here. And we're going to call this the score label. And I'm going to X out on the current string. And I'm going to put score. And this one I'm actually going to do a little styling. I'm going to go down to here to the border. And I want to just make sure we have uh, a border. It can be width one. It's totally fine. And so just to, just to um, kind of make it pop out a bit more. And then I'm going to add one more label. I'll have to do a little more design here to get it all organized nicely. This will be our time label. And I'm going to X out of here. Got time. And then I also want to put a border here. So I'm going to give it a little border. You can give your border whatever color you'd like or width you'd like. I'm going to start off with that. So the screen's on me. Okay, so we've got score. And we've got time. And we're going to know this one's going to be a little smaller. Bring it over here. And the last thing on here is a button. I'm going to pop right in the middle between everything. And this button will be our star button. And I'm going to click this X and then hit start. And approximately, let me bring this back over here. Sorry. It's approximately in the middle. I think it's probably good enough for now. You can do a little. Uh, adjust, some, some minor adjustments if you are so inspired. Alrighty, so underneath our sort of our, our score and time and start button, I want to add a canvas component. So I'm going to go over here to add component. So I'm going to drag out canvas. And it's going to be the entire screen or as much of the screen as we can uh, add it onto. So let's see here. Get the low and a bit lower. So we got that set up. I'm actually going to, we could just modify the sprite type one, but I'm going to walk you through the process just so you can see how to make your own sprites. So I'm going to delete this sprite. And I'm actually, so I'll click on stage one, and I'm going to add a sprite type. And this one will be the paddle sprite. So get this out of here. I'm going to add uh, an image. This will be our paddle rid of the uh, beaver and I want to switch to make sure to do a little organizing here I want this to be a 15 height width should be a hundred passes through should be false so that means they should all bounce off each other and we're gonna make draggable true so draggable true passes through to false I'm gonna add one of these to our canvas towards the bottom so this this will be good all right so there's our first sprite I'm gonna add another sprite here one the ball sprite. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to change the picture here. I'm going to make a pong ball. I'm going to get rid of this guy. And the size is actually we want this to be a little smaller. So I'm just going to go a bit smaller. I want passes through to false so that it bounces. And I want to actually set the bounce to 100. So that means every time it hits an object, it should bounce back at the exact same. So 
of speed or rate. Uh, I'm going to bring a ball stride out close to the top. And I'm actually going to rename this the ball. It occurs to me that I did not rename our other sprite, so I'm going to rename this one the paddle. And we should as well. Okay, so we got all that stuff done. That's it for our user interface. We can already sort of start testing it. If you kind of want to see what this looks like, you can kind of see what it starts to do. We can move, we should be able to move this around and get some bouncing of the ball. I think it's important to do it that way. Okay. So that is the user interface for now. The next video will focus on doing the blocking.